worked on this restoration project and the main problem is that the components are uh, very rare and some of them are obsolete and are not produced anymore and the case is also uh, with this sensor this was the and this is the original one that was on the unit and uh, I just cannot find this sensor anymore so uh, it's not even produced by who made this so um, the closest thing I have found it should have the same temperatures is this one but um, again there are some problems we are facing and one of them is that the thickness of the sensor because this is the way the original sensor was mounted and uh, this is the thickness of the one that I have found and uh, we can see there is a difference so if if I put this on the new sensor it will clearly not be enough space here to fit it but also without it um, the problem is the gap is too large so I will have to figure out a way to mount this sensor because um, this is as I told you this sensor tells the the ECU that the unit has started when it when it's uh, about 80 degrees Celsius and this is when the switch opens and uh, tells the ECU that it has has detected flame so um, I just have to find a way to mount it here also this is a metal piece and we, sh we somehow need to insulate this from the sensor so yeah uh, I will take this this down from the sensor because we don't need it and I have to find a way to put it here so uh, we can test we can test the unit after that to see if this is working correctly and uh, the unit is detecting the flame well actually after trying a few times I uh, managed to mount the sensor uh, with the old with the old parts the old insulator and also the old uh, spring that is holding the sensor and uh, this is quite okay I think it's holding the sensor really tightly so I don't think uh, it should be a problem of this getting loose in time anyway I will uh, try to push it in a little bit more but but actually it's it's holding and I think it's okay I think we will be okay like this one more thing to try out is if this uh, metal cover is still getting in place and yeah it's okay so it's it's closing properly and there are no problems so it's not touching anything yeah okay so uh, in this case I will uh, just connect the wires back and go out and test the unit to see if it's uh, working I think these cables should be rooted like this. This is too short. Okay, let's see. And the other one 
here yeah okay is it going on yeah okay so it's yeah don't forget to put this one back and we now put the switch shield on and everything looks okay okay so i will put everything back together and go out and uh, test the unit so we are out here with the unit and uh, actually i tried to start it a few times and the problem is that uh, sometimes the unit is not getting hot enough for the sensor to open so the unit will start uh, we'll try to start for about three minutes three and a half minutes and if in that period of time the sensor does not open for the unit this means there is no flame and uh, it will stop so i even put back this uh, back side of the of the heater to reduce a little bit the airflow on the sensor and hopefully the unit will start yes after a few tries i have seen that if uh, if the heater is after after uh, working for a while and uh, there's already some heat in the heat exchanger then uh, the unit will start again but uh, i'm not sure if it will start from from cold so uh, actually I don't know what to do next the, the temperature switch should be the same as as the one uh, the one is defective it's rated at the same temperature so another thing I noticed that not all the time the burning starts exactly when it should and sometimes the unit burns lower or higher and uh, this could be also a problem but the next step is to take take the unit apart and uh, take a look at inside to see maybe there are some deposits some dirt inside the unit and this is why it's not starting uh, every time as it should as you can see there is no smoke the burning process is ongoing the pump is working but still the glow plug it's energized and we can see that it's drawing 17 amps and uh, the pump is working there are nearly no air bubbles uh, but despite this sometimes the unit will start sometimes the unit uh, doesn't and well, this can be a problem. So the next thing is to wait for the seals. Yeah, well, now actually the unit started, so we can see the started. It detected the flame. We can see now that there is no power taken by the glow plug, and the unit is uh, working. So I guess after a good clean, um, this should be solved. Or if not, I will have to think about something, uh, some modifications at the sensor, so the sensor will get a smaller airflow. And uh, the temperature on that part will rise higher and uh, let the unit start. We are back with this heater. I finally got some parts to it, I uh, got the gaskets that we will find here, or at least we should find here, and uh, today we are gonna take the rest of the unit apart and open it up to see what it looks like inside and uh, hopefully we can clean it. So first of all... Um, as I said before, this uh, fan here also 
has this electronic or a relay board or something like that not really much electronic on it it's a relay and diode and a resistor and uh, I can see the only way we could take this out from here is to disconnect all these cables and then the fan should come off and uh, this board also so before doing this I took about a thousand pictures <laughs> just to be sure that we put back everything in the right place and uh, so we don't have to figure it out later so I will just disconnect these wires and uh, this should come out then hopefully okay two more left this is one and another one here okay yes so this one is out and uh, let's see the cables should come down from here so uh, if you want you can take them down from here or not I think I will because it just has too much attached to it and uh, I want to clean this and work on work on it without uh, pulling these cables all the time so we will disconnect the overheat sensor the temperature sensor that we mounted okay so actually this is staying here pretty good and also this clip from here yeah and uh, now all this should be out of our way okay so this has this is what we are left with uh, they say this is a pipe to vent the inside of the of these glow clock connections here and uh, so uh, condensation would not accumulate here but I don't know if we should put this back or not because the cap from here already has a hole I don't know we will see and it's I don't know what kind of pipe is this, some kind of rubber. Well, we will see what, what will happen with this pipe. I found something similar here in the workshop, but I don't know if it's the same with this or not. And we can clearly see that this really didn't have a big purpose because they mounted the unit and uh, mounted it on this hose and it's clearly closed so it's not uh, working now okay so here we can see a clutch this is a little rubber part which connects this side of the blower motor to I believe this is some kind of uh, fuel pump or a distribution of the fuel on the burning on the burner mesh so we will see what's inside there once we open it okay I will be cleaning this later on but for now we will just put it aside and uh, go ahead open up these bolts and see what's inside here 
Actually, it's not sounding so bad. It's moving quite easily. Okay. So, uh, I think I will take down the glow plug first. Let's see if any of these keys... Oh, this is it, okay. Yes, this is out now. Well, it doesn't look bad. I think we can reuse this for the time being. Okay, so this is where I cannot see anything inside yet. Okay, so uh, we will open up these screws now and uh, take a look inside. Actually, they are coming out real easy. Oh, they are pretty long. Two more. There is a rubber o-ring here, or it should be, but I couldn't find that one. Okay, so let's see what's here. Well, this is just a this is just a part of metal, and we can see one gasket here. This should be the gasket that is the replacement. Well, yeah, that's okay. But what about from here? There is some dirt. Okay. Now this is the part where I have no idea how this should come out. There are no more screws, so yeah, we will just have to try and uh, pry it out. Yeah, okay, something is happening. Let me just do the same thing on this side. Yeah, so if the drawings are correct and there is an o-ring here we should try to uh, pry it from both sides so it comes out from the two sides at the same time okay, let's find some smaller screwdrivers okay so one from this side I really hope that the other gasket is what I need okay it's moving just push it a little bit and I will try to get the other screwdriver on this side okay so this is in also 
let's try. Well, something is definitely happening. Yeah, and I think I think it will be out. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So unfortunately this doesn't look so good. I think these are cracks here. Could be. It's definitely some cracks. But this is also welded here and here, so I don't think it will be a big problem. This is not sounding so bad, actually. Yeah, this is the o-ring. I think, I don't know. We have to take care, because I think we will be reusing this. Also, we can see these gaskets here are gone and uh, these should be the ones going in there. Okay, so this doesn't look so good either. Actually, Take this down. Yeah. So, okay, the fuel is coming in from this side. But this is not looking so good. This, this mesh is entirely gone from here well I don't know what we can do about that this doesn't look so good also the inside here of the burner is I don't know if it's deformed or it should be like that could be it's just like that from the factory I don't know okay so this is definitely a problem because that's another part that I could not find anywhere these gaskets here okay this will come down this is not a problem for now because I have this <laughs> we will clean this out I don't think I will open anything here I don't even know if it can be opened or not. Oh yes, it can. So this comes down. These are some bronze. Parts and this is Okay, so we have another part here that wants or don't want. To. Okay, it's out now. Yes, I think these holes must be cleaned also. We have a spacer here. Let me just put them in the 
order that I took them down okay so like this this is fine and yeah what's in here also needs some cleaning I will not pull this apart because I don't really think it matters so I did find my heat exchanger that I had and, uh, well it's a problem with it it's not the same I think this is for gasoline but this is a diesel heater there are also some differences on the exhaust the real problem is that the inside this inside mesh is not the same and uh, we cannot really use this on uh, this gasoline one on the diesel one and for now this is a problem because uh, we will have to find somewhere this insert and uh, change it so again we must uh, play the waiting game of course I will let the customer know first and uh, see if he is still into this and still wants to repair the heater well this is it for now we will see what uh, happens after this okay so uh, after speaking with the customer and also having searched a little bit for this part it, uh, it comes clear that um, Ebe Speher never delivered this mesh so it was never a spare part the only thing you could buy was the whole heat exchanger with the burning chamber and everything in it of course this is a part that we won't I don't think or it's impossible to find anymore so the decision is to clean everything up as uh, much as I can put the new gaskets in and uh, since the heater fired up uh, the way it was we can just hope that it will work a little bit better we have to remember that uh, the heater will not be used as uh, as you would use it today to heat up the car and sleep in it it will just be for show and uh, clearly sometimes the customer will only start the heater just to show off so uh, considering this uh, I think uh, this is all we can do for this heater the problem is the spare parts and uh, yes the spare parts and the problem is it we cannot find them this is the biggest issue so we will just clean this up and uh, of course I will not touch anything inside there because uh, if I uh, let me just turn on the light a little bit so if we touch this surface even what remains here will come off so I don't want that I will just gently clean around here and uh, that's pretty much it of course I will try to take down this paint or whatever is on it because it will be harder for the customer after that when everything is mounted together okay so uh, yes I will start uh, cleaning the parts and then uh, then we'll be we'll be back to mount the heater and uh, finally we will test it and uh, just see how it goes 
Okay. What is actually different at this heater that the fuel comes inside this fan module and somehow through this impeller and I think this is some kind of uh, distributor it comes through these holes and uh, gets gets sprayed or atomized on this surface and this is how it burns yeah it's an older concept and this is the difference that I found from modern heaters and even this I don't know actually I don't know what what heater is this from I can see a part number here which is starting with 20 and usually at the bus pair 20 means gasoline and 25 means diesel yes and on this one it starts with 25 so clearly this is the difference on this gasoline heater uh, the fuel comes right at uh, in the glow plug chamber as also with the modern heaters so this is quite a difference uh, there's nothing we can do these things are fixed together we cannot take it out i had an idea to change only this part but it's welded it's it's just too much work and uh, i'm not sure if uh, it will be a success also if we start doing that uh, we will damage this uh, this lining to the point that uh, then it's really nothing we can do so we will leave everything as it is and uh, clean it of course change the gaskets uh, that we have so all these gaskets uh, we have them and uh, yeah that's pretty much it okay so i will go clean everything up and uh, be back after that to try to put the heater together okay so we are back I cleaned everything as much as I could and as much as it possible so uh, I did not insist very much here inside the, the burning chamber and uh, this mesh I left it I pretty much tried not to touch it and not to blow it too much with uh, the compressed air but uh, when I uh, blow compressed air in this in the heat exchanger the cloud of smoke came out so it's clearly there was some deposits inside but now it's fairly clean okay um, I have also cleaned this bracket which is not really important okay this uh, fuel distribution system I try to clean as much as I could inside uh, also here where the gaskets will come uh, I didn't change this o-ring I just uh, put a little bit of grease on it so it will slide in easier and I think we can reuse that without a problem the fan still has a little bit of noise probably you can hear it but at this point there's nothing I really can do about this so we will just leave it as it is and actually here is a hole that I did not insist on and I think this blows some air here to the glow plug okay so I will just blow this hole out and be back
and it's okay so it shouldn't be a problem okay um, the next next thing was this and this is some kind of fuel distribution i think the fuel comes here in on this side and as this rotates also this little fan here rotates and some i think it pulls the fuel and uh, sprays it here on this gasket at least at least this is how i imagine it running okay so uh, the next thing is this uh, this washer was here okay and uh, yeah then came this part here okay and this one just uh, has a little thread and will just uh, go back on here actually there was only one place that i could find some pictures of this and they said something uh, about uh, a little washer uh, thinner washer but that I, it's not here so i don't know it was not here in this unit okay so i will just tighten this a little bit i guess not too much yeah i i'm afraid to overdo it because there's a just a spring holding all this together okay so well it is as it is there's nothing really we can change about this also you probably i don't know if you can see there are some cracks on some of the these pellets but this is just something we will have to live with okay so now that this is on we can uh, put everything back here to the heat exchanger so here it, it was a little uh, o-ring which we have here and this is i think sitting down in our warehouse for at least a few years yeah and this is actually 2004 so you get the idea okay and this is something that comes here so this will be mounted here and this I think pushes air through this hole uh, to the glow plug okay so that stays there nicely the next gasket let's see yeah it also has that hole so the direction is quite obvious I think this is it is there any reason why it should come like this well no no okay so this is the mounting position yes. okay so we will just put this gasket here okay know why I don't have something holding this yeah. 
Okay, so there is... Yeah. These are two felt rings. And this, this is how the part comes. It will... Two pieces of this. And this will come... Okay, will this be a problem? Will I have to take this down again? Okay, I just have to be careful with this because if not I will have to wait for, okay, for another two weeks. Actually, this is something that is still in the Ebelspeher warehouse. And I think they have maybe 300 of them, also of this gasket. So these gaskets are not a problem. Even this is on stock. <sighs> but the heat exchanger is not anymore and even if it is, it's probably at the price that I don't think somebody will pay so much for that I didn't even search for it to be honest okay and this is the last one that comes here okay so let's see this was like this Yes, and actually that one I think comes on this other side, okay, yes, this is the one that comes here, we put the o-rings also, we could check again, but yeah, everything seems fine. Actually, I did more problems when taking it down again than good. Okay, so these are the two felt seals and uh, actually these were quite, quite used on the... before changing them work quite burned away okay so we will just put this here and I will try to push them a little bit I hope everything is aligned and we won't have to take down this again Okay, this seems, this is the, okay, maybe just a little bit, we will need to twist it, okay, too much, yeah, that's about it, I think uh, when we will put the screws in, everything will be pulled back together, yeah, this uh, rubber seal here, it's a little bit higher, and I think that's, why everything is held up to a distance yeah and finally this one this is the last one and this should come here now the problem is I didn't really check the position of this before taking it down so Let's see, are there multiple positions for this or only one? Well, this could be one, but it's clearly not. This could be one, but it's clearly not. Ah, okay, so I will not even try to figure it out. I will just have a look on... on the 
on the movie I took. Okay, so I will stop it. Okay, so uh, never mind. I in the meantime I figured it out. So there is actually no, no, no position in which we can mount this. Only the right way, because any way we put it, it's uh, just not aligned with the heater. So this is the only position we we can mount this piece. So actually it's not even worth uh, trying uh, anything else if you don't remember so this is the only position we can put this part back so i will just put the gasket into its place and now this part okay and uh, here are the screws which are holding this all together okay so i will just put put these screws back here well, yeah where is my okay here it is okay so i will just tighten them here a little bit on the other side just to press the o-ring uh, down at the same time on each side and to ensure that everything is going in straight this one and so on so yeah I think we are pretty much done with this part I will just double check all the screws again with, I think this is the right screwdriver for this yes Four. Okay, just another short check. Yeah, these are all fine. So next, uh, next we will put back the the fan. Let me see if I forget something in the meantime. Well, I hope not. Okay, so should really take care about this because I already broke one of those contacts okay so it's this little clutch that will come here like this and the uh, other side of the fan there are the two corresponding pins that will come to the other two holes of the rubber clutch okay so the bearings are are a little bit noisy actually have here a 24 volts similar motor and there is no sound here so should we even try to open up this motor 
I don't know. We could try just uh, maybe to put a little bit of grease on the bearings. I will not change them now because it's not something we usually do. No. And no. So I don't think these are made to be opened. This is just to be. Well, this one, this one opened. Let's see here. This one also. Okay, so we are heading somewhere. Let's just open it up a little bit. I hope that this will come out. I don't want to push this safety clip out. Let's see if it's even worth doing something here. I should have made a little mark to where the motor was. But it's too late now. So let's just see what's inside and uh, see if we can help those bearings a little bit. Of course the ideal solution will would be to change them. That's not something I'm planning to do. And actually, okay, so it's we took this down. Okay, there's a little spring here. We should put this back. Well, it's not sounding so bad. <laughs> okay, let's see if it goes through to the other side. Well, it does, but I think this should go also. These two connections here, okay. So we will just take a quick look here and see well yeah and this is why i cleaned everything so now i'm filled with dirt again there is still some life left in this uh, carbon brushes and uh, okay just have to keep track of everything is falling apart here but it's not actually so bad the bearings are not so bad okay so i will have to go to clean this because it's just full of carbon dust okay
Okay, so um, I just cleaned a little bit this electric motor inside. Of course, the bearings are maybe still a little bit noisy, but uh, the main uh, thing is that this could be changed and uh, well, if the customer considers that this is too much noise from him, uh, then he will change them. I don't have the proper tools to change this, so... And this is not something that we normally do. We normally change the whole uh, motor and that's it. But it's good to know that in this case uh, the customer can change can change the bearings if he wants to. Okay, so let me just put back this rubber seal together with the cables. Okay, this is one. This is two. Okay. And this should go inside here. Yeah. Okay. This is in. This part is in. And now from the other side. Make sure that the washer is still here. Okay. It's here now. And uh, you will just have to put this back the way it was. Okay. And now I just have to find the place where the holes go through to the other side. Okay, I think this is it. We will just put this screw in and hopefully we will find the <laughs> thread on the other part. Actually, I think for one side we found it. Yes, it's in. So the same here. Something it's not in place here. Okay. Almost. Okay. It's I think it's in now. We will tighten them by hand first, a little bit, as much as we can. And now, I think my tool is gone. I don't know where it is, whatever. I will tighten this until I can with this and I will go and uh, look for the other plier. I don't know where I left it. Okay, it's pretty close. Well, it's now sound. It's not sounding better or worse. It's about the same, but at least we took out the dirt from inside. Okay, it's done with this. I will look for the. Actually, I think I will send the customer this one. If he wants, he can change. He can take. 
the bearings from here but i don't think it's worth it. the bearings uh, are still sellable and you can still find them So, I just got my other tool, and yeah, this is, this is enough, well, who knows, maybe a little bit better, I don't know. Okay, so this is just uh, pushed on here, yeah, and that's it. Okay, so now we will mount everything back. Let's see. Is there any position? There are three screws. But if I remember, it was down here somewhere or not something i'm not doing right yeah i think this comes first yeah well. okay so we will just have to find the place for this this is not it First we must align the clutch with so we will just rotate this until it falls into place I guess no well the holes do align up now and everything is is rotating inside but for some reason the motor is not oh, okay so the clutch was not in the right position just This not like that. Why? Okay, I will just spin the motor a little bit. Yeah. Well, wrong again. Why is it so hard? quite okay yeah okay so it's uh it's okay now the holes are lining up and this is how this was fixed together with uh, this board okay so just see how the board goes and i guess it's something like this no yeah so this is it and uh, right away i can see that this is not in the good place 
So I will have to turn the motor first. Because this should be up there. Okay, let's see. Maybe one more. No, so uh, this is why I took some pictures. Let's see. If we can figure it out from this, then that should be a really good thing. Okay, so as far as I can see, this was the top of the heater, so this is okay, and this was here, yes, 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 but now I have to align it again with the clutch. Almost, but just almost. And this is the position of the motor, but okay, let's just take this out for a moment. And we know that this has to come in this position at these holes. We just have to align it with the clutch, okay, or not. Why is this so hard? I took this apart one less time, but everything went together so smoothly. Okay, yeah, this is it. So I'm thinking now of putting this back or not, I don't even know what to do, I'm not sure, should we or should we not, but I think I will just put it here, just for the sake of it, and uh, we will see if it will or it will be not used but actually since this goes to the to the glow plug if I just could remember the way it was then That could be nice, but yeah, I think this is it. Okay. So I will put it back here anyway, and uh, the customer will decide to use this or not. I cut down the, the part that was 
pushed together by mounting the heater on top of it. So now he will have the option to drill the hole or not. It's up to him at this point. Okay, so it's out here and from here the customer will do as he likes. From my point of view it's not really important because there's already a hole on the on the cap of the plug so okay so now now this is what we will put back let me find the screws yes these are the screws okay I'm hoping it will work at least the way it did. I usually don't do compromises. I change everything that needs to be changed and I never return a heater without being 100% sure that it will be fine. But this is this is a special case and even even if I would want to I some parts I will never find so let's hope that uh, it will work the way it is <coughs> okay so we are pretty much back with everything together so the next thing will be this harness and uh, actually what I will try to do since the glow plug was connected from the outside through this cap I will try to see if I can connect this um, where is it no oh, here it is so if, if I connect I can I if I can connect this directly here and using this wire which is coming here and uh, connect the relay connect the relay to this wire so we will not have uh, a wire coming through the cap of the glow plug we will see we'll just have to find the right wires okay so moving on these are the two sensors Okay, there's no problem here. I know exactly how these were connected. We cannot make a mistake there. But this, this here I will have to check again our documentation. Yes. our photos to say so so what is happening here there's only one 
one brown wire coming up here and uh, this is for the glow plug yes and this is also for the glow plug and this also gets divided and this come back comes back here okay so uh, a real chance is that I could feed a wire back to within this harness but I'm quite I'm not so optimistic about being able to do this All the other thing is just leave it with the wire coming through this cap. I don't really like that idea. Okay, so I will see how will I do this. Maybe I will just cut this and uh, do it back with a better tape. I have some tape used in automotive industry and I think that should be better yes okay okay so I, I drink my coffee I will explain to you what I did here uh, if you remember on the beginning of the video and the other video also the glow plug power supply is uh, done by this relay and uh, this I think it's a voltage or a current regulator something like that and uh, this was not originally on the heater so somebody mounted it I don't think it's a bad thing and yeah we should keep it so originally the glow plug supply was coming from uh, this board where everything is connected and uh, then to the to the glow plug through these holes but when they mounted this uh, relay they did not route a wire into the harness and uh, the glow plug was uh, supplied with one wire through this hole and one wire from the outside so it came totally outside from the heater so what I did I just routed the wire through the original wire harness I uh, I did it with uh, some tape that it used in the OM industry. It's a really hard tape, and uh, you cannot you cannot uh, break it. Tear, you cannot tear it with your hands, so you have to cut it. And uh, it's really strong, and uh, of course, it's not the original look, but. I think uh, this will be much better, the wire coming inside the heater where it's supposed to, than uh, through the glow plug cap. So this is what I did here. And uh, the next step is to put everything back together and uh, go outside to the test bench and uh, try to start the unit. Okay, so we got to this point when we need to connect the glow plug and uh, I thought I could leave these wires here and just connect them but uh, just uh, solder them together but there is actually no space because this is the cap and this is where the or wire was run through by someone and I want to hide everything. So uh, what I'm trying to do now is to open this, uh, this up and uh, put my wire from here into this. Uh, then uh, I will tighten them and maybe just a little bit of solder here to, to hold them in place. I don't know if I can open this, this is the bigger problem 
that I'm facing. But we will have to try because this is the better solution, I think. And I don't have these connectors without wires. So let's hope that these these wires will come out and we can put ours inside well no actually it's rather breaking than coming out i still have a few of these so if it doesn't work on this one maybe the next okay so we are looking for something like this try to open this up somehow is there a possibility that they are also soldered here could be Nothing, nothing happens, the wire does not come out, okay, so I will try to cut somehow this here and open, open the connector up, I'm pretty sure these are just tightened around the wire, but I don't know why it is so hard to pull them out okay so actually the first set of connectors i did not manage to open them because uh, i already pulled on this i tried to cut them and uh, yeah it was just not working out so uh on the second one which i already have them here uh, it was it was a fight with them what I did is uh, I had to cut with the angle grinder a groove here also on this one and uh, I had to pry them open with the screwdriver and only then I could take the wires out so this these are held here quite seriously I don't know what they use but yeah this is uh, this is quite quite heavy duty so next uh, I somehow managed to put these things back in and uh, put the wires on this uh, on these connectors and uh, um, I tightened them a little bit with uh, the pliers and uh, I just uh, did the best I could here and now I will just uh, apply a little bit of solder here to hold them and uh, these are heat shrinks but I don't think I will be able to move them after this and uh, then I will just connect it to the glow plug and then the cap should close as it should so let me see i just hope that uh, there are not so high temperatures here so this solder will melt but i think that's a problem if the temperatures get so high so just a little bit it will run everywhere it's needed okay on this also okay it's too much
yeah i think this is uh okay i will just get out the soldering iron okay yeah maybe you can see it better now let me just put this somewhere where it can cool down okay so this is how it looks now and uh, i think it should be fine let's hope it's not warm anymore should we try to move these heat shrinks yeah we should try but i don't think they will move as far as we want well one of them did this one will not but is there a danger to touch them together i don't think so it shouldn't be i will just try to push the wires back a little bit into the heater so they are not so long okay I think this should work we will see if we can put the cap back I hope so okay this is a really small screw do I have the wrench here I don't think so Anyway, let's just try to put this into its place. Yeah, I think I think that it will be fine. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so I will just tighten this first and then put the cap back. Oh, here it is. The key is here. The wrench is here. Okay. I think this is it. It's much better this way as it was before with the wire coming in through this hole. So, yeah. I think that's pretty much it. It looks better than before, but <laughs> let's hope it works. Okay, so we will see you outside. Well, okay, we are out at the test punch and the unit is uh, working at this point. Everything is connected, fuel pump. I also put a, a silencer on the intake. As this is the way this heater should work. Um, Actually, I'm partially satisfied with um, this heater and the uh, point is this sensor that we replaced, the flame sensor. Um, I don't know exactly if the sensor is the problem or just the unit is uh, firing up a little bit uh, too slowly, but um, Usually from the first try, if we start the unit from cold, uh, it will not start from the first time. But if we, after it stops, because it doesn't detect flame, the second time we start it, then uh, the unit usually successfully starts. So uh, I don't, I'm not sure if uh, this sensor is. Uh, maybe detecting the temperature too slowly because uh, what we had it was a little bit different but 
was the same temperature 80 degrees Celsius so um, actually this can be resolved um, I saw some uh, sensors marked at a lower temperature from where I bought this so I will leave this up to the to the guys at the workshop if they want to order another part then uh, yes they can do it but other than that I think the unit is running fine with the limitations of the inside lining that it's a little bit used and uh, probably the flame is not so perfect as it should also the burning tube is a little bit uh, deformed but yeah I think for show purposes just uh, this unit can be used fine and uh, it should start from the second attempt if not the first but uh, overall I think this was it I, uh, I will not spend any more time with this uh, if it was uh, any other case uh, probably I wouldn't even start to work on this unit because just, just the, it's, it's just not viable to bring them back it's not cost effective so uh, also parts are really hard to find and uh, so on so uh, all this being told thank you for watching um, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more heater videos and uh, yeah that's pretty much about it so thank you guys bye bye just one more thing to take in consideration with this unit is uh, what uh, motivated me and kept me going is just because I think I will never have another chance in this life to uh, repair a heater like this and to see what was inside it and how all the technologies work and what is actually the evolution of these heaters through time. Okay, so uh, that's about it guys, okay, bye bye, bye again. <laughs>